Hey everybody, it's Andrew again, your average jeweler. We are talking another birthstone today, but quite frankly, it's way more than a birthstone. Garnet does not get the credit it truly deserves in a lot of ways, and so I hate to box it into just a birthstone. Most people watching this video probably feel like they have a handle on Garnet, when in reality, I deal with a lot of gemstones, and when I truly try and explain Garnet, I need to check references. It is a very complex stone family with a lot of different characteristics, some interesting things going on. Let's talk about those today. Welcome back if you've already been here. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. We do a lot of different topics, jewelry related, gemstone related, and try and just get into some of the things that we don't see every single day unless you work in a jewelry store. And today we're going to be talking about garnet. If you find this video interesting or like it, please hit the like button below. Those kind of things actually help to get this video shared even further on something like YouTube. Now a lot of you might already be wondering what I'm talking about when I say there's more to Garnet. If you haven't seen any of my other videos where I talk about Garnet, not only does Garnet, Garnet come in a lot of different colors aside from that typical red orangey color that we see, it has a really different system than most gemstones. In fact, garnet is not just categorized by being the same chemical composition. Many gemstones that we talk about, you can designate a chemical composition of that stone, and that is how you identify it. Now, while garnet is not just some willy-nilly loose system, it does have a different and more complex way of identifying what is garnet. So what is garnet? Well, garnet is actually a group of gemstones or a family of gemstones with the same structure and yet it can have different chemical composition. Now that doesn't mean that it's completely different and a lot of people, including myself, can get very confused once you start to dig into this. But the general principle is that these crystals are so closely knit in their chemical structure that the chemical compositions can actually be mixed in different ways with a lot of the specific species of garnet. So when you look at garnet from way, way outside, you actually see what we call a family of gemstones. It's the garnet family. And as you get a little bit closer in, you're going to see different groups of garnet, and then you get more specific, and you get into individual species of garnet. And I'll try and show you a little bit of imagery if I can get some good, good pictures to illustrate how this actually looks and how it works. But the bottom line is it's way more complex than a lot of other gemstones that we typically talk about. And so it's important to understand that this is a family of gemstones, that you actually get different mixtures of these chemical compositions. My goal is not to get into the real specific things that I believe few will remember, but I at least want to talk about some of the designations so that you do have a good understanding. So garnets are spit, split initially into two different groups. You have the aluminum garnets, and then you actually have your calcium garnets. Now, your aluminum garnets are oftentimes what we consider our more common garnets, those dark red varieties. And they're actually a mixture of your almondine family, or excuse me, your almondine group of garnets, and your pyrope group of garnets. Those are two different groups within the calcium designation. And you can have specific species, again, that will intermingle, Oftentimes with these specific type of garnets, you very rarely have pure pyrope or pure almondine. Again, all of this making garnet quite specific and unique. When you get into the calcium varieties, you start seeing some of your more rare variety of garnet, one of my personal favorites, Savorite garnet, which is a specific species of the group Grosseler garnet. Hopefully all of this is kind of sinking in. I'll be honest with you, I consider this a very confusing type of gemstone if you really want to understand it. But you can, and so let's, let's try and understand that. 
So very rarely will you hear jewelers or even gemologists showing you a specific gemstone and immediately saying, this is a pyrope garnet, or this is an almondine garnet, or this is a grossular garnet, or this is andradite, or whatever type of garnet it might be, you're usually going to hear them specify either by a locality, so you'll hear things like Mozambique, and that is not uncommon at all, Malaya, you'll get these designations that might be associated with a specific locale, or they may have a specific color that they have a trade name for. Like rhodolite, for instance, is often a very pretty pinkish red color, and you'll hear the term rhodolite used to designate that color. You will find certain garnets that have enough repute that they'll use the specific species name, like Savorite Garnet. And that's not entirely uncommon. An orange garnet that people will often talk about, um, Spessartite or Spessartine. And they'll designate these based on those things rather than trying to scientifically describe these gemstones. It's not a new concept. If you think about sapphires, which if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to watch it. It's one of my favorites. But sapphires are many times designated by their different colors, so blue sapphire, yellow sapphire, purple sapphire. However, if it's a red sapphire, it's a ruby. They're the same mineral, but ruby, because of that color and because of its history and provenance, has been given its own name. Red is ruby. And when you look at garnets, you'll find different things like that. Um, sometimes it's as simple as calling a deep purple garnet a grape garnet. That's not an uncommon designation. But when you see certain green garnets, there's a few variety, it wouldn't be unusual to hear someone say Savorite garnet or Demantoid garnet or using those specific terms that narrow it down to a species. But you will very rarely hear people talking about it's a calcium garnet or an aluminum garnet or it's in the grossular family. You might hear gemologists or jewelers asking about that or probing about it if it's a new variety to them, but generally speaking, they're going to try and simplify it for not only the jeweler, but for the end consumer, if you will, or the person who finally gets it who may not be a gemologist. And they try and simplify it to either a region or locale or by a specific color. And if you probe, hopefully the person you're getting it from or that's showing it to you does know more behind what variety or what group it may belong to. But ultimately, the Garnet family is so complex that it shouldn't be strange for us to think that there's a system to simplify it to maybe understand them a little bit better. So I could talk about Garnets almost all day. I think they're an awesome gemstone. A few things that I will mention just to kind of help you understand better. One question I often hear, why do I not see all these other variety of garnet? Why is it that I've only heard of garnet as this orangey red birthstone for January? Well, it's pretty simple when you start to recognize how rare some of these other varieties are. In fact, it wouldn't be unusual to hear people say common garnet for what we typically understand garnet to be. But a stone like Savorite Garnet, for example, I bring that up a lot, again, it's a favorite of mine, but about 85% of what they find, which is far more rare than these other garnets, ends up being very small stones. They don't find a lot of large gemstones for something like that. And only about 10% of the remaining 15 is anything bigger than three carats, and then that final 1% of that ends up being stones that are significant gemstones, maybe you know larger than eight carats or so. The point being, you don't get to see a lot of them because there's, a not, there's not a lot of it where they can market it to a mass audience, or you can't just walk into any jewelry store and see an entire showcase full of it. There's just not enough of it to go around. And even in its lower qualities, it's not something that you're going to see a lot of. So to answer that question, why do I not hear of all these other garnets? It's usually because you're going to see them in smaller amounts and maybe some jewelers don't even carry them. 
because of what they are and the fact that they think people don't know them, people won't look for them, why would I spend what would be a lot more to buy these stones than to buy the more common garnet that people think about. I would even say it's worth noting that you can find garnets in phenomenal type gemstones like color change for instance or bicolor stones where there's different colors in the same crystal. It's a pretty endless variety within this family. That's the bottom line. I can't make this video that long. I again could talk about garnets almost all day long and with each specific species of garnet you can really spend a lot of time talking about it. So I encourage you to kind of just type in different garnet species if you're curious immediately and just see what's out there. There's a huge amount of different garnet species and with each one there's a lot of history, there's some unique stories. If you look at a stone like Demantoid garnet, it's actually very rich in much Russian history and you can dive into any one of these. For the purpose of this video I wanted to just give you a good introduction to how big the garnet family really can be and how underappreciated it is. If you want to learn more about other underappreciated stones, I did make a video on that. Hopefully you can check that out. Underrated gemstones, there's a lot of them out there and I chose five that I thought were the most underrated stones in my opinion. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button. Uh, send a comment below, maybe tell me which um, variety of garnet you came across that you found the most interesting. And I hope you keep coming back so we can keep learning together.